Hello there, welcome to another video of Nerdy Tech Tips channel. As you guys can see on the screen, we are going to have a look how to set up IP Fire, free Linux firewall. Make sure you do not skip anything on this video because you will end up having frustrating time while setting it up. So let's get started. I'm doing this tutorial on a virtual machine, so I did run into a few issues. You might not face any of these issues if you're doing it on Raspberry Pi, but I haven't tried it, so I can't really 100% guarantee. But I, I did an uh, alternative way to fix them, so you guys can try as well. So before we talk about issues, we need to understand the interfaces here that has names like red, green, blue and orange. So these are four network interfaces. Red is going to be for internet or WAN. Blue is for network interface cards like Wi-Fi card. Orange is for web servers and green is the interface for local ethernet lan in my tutorial i will be using only red and green interfaces so let's get started with the tutorial how to install it and how to configure and we will talk about some of the features that you can use and how to configure them i might not be able to create a tutorial for all of them but i will try. so let's get started with creating a virtual machine here for ip fire so I have just clicked on new and create virtual machine and just name it whatever you want to name it. I'm going to name it fire. So let's get next, next, leave it default. Going to select a van and next. I'm going to go ahead and just next. And I'm going to choose this ISO file that I have previously downloaded and you can download it from ipfire.org. So we have actually created our virtual machine already. Two things I'm going to check is number of processors I'm going to add another network adapter which it is going to be our for LAN. So let's add that and then hit apply. So I've got two adapters here, WAN and LAN and connect. Start up this virtual machine. Just follow the instructions on on screen. It's pretty nice and easy. Now it does take a quite a bit on this PK fire thing, whatever it is doing. Don't panic, I have cut that part, that's why it's fast on this video. So let's continue with normal settings. So on this screen, the password is for root user. Now it's not for web interface. So enter a root user password, write it down somewhere. And this is the admin password for your web interface. So the next one, as I explained, I'm using green and red. So we're going to set up green and red interface. We just basically need to assign the proper hardware if you're using a Raspberry Pi. You need to know what MAC address. Now on this one, it's pretty easy to tell. Out. We can just basically go into a virtual machine. Over here, we can see what MAC address is for what interface. So for red, we're going to assign WAN. And for green, we're going to assign the LAN MAC address. So let's get them assigned. So when we are assigning address here, there is something to note down. The issue that I ran into for red interface was it was not getting any IP address for my router. So I had to disable my router DHCP service and switch it to manual assigning IP addresses. So that way my firewall did 
started connected uh, did started connecting with the internet if you're having the same issue just use the static IP and turn off a DHCP service on your router or wherever you're connected so make sure if you're having that issue the only way I would be able to I was able to resolve was just switching it to static IP and many of other people over the internet I did research had the same issue and they were only able to use the static IP feature on a red interface so be aware if you're having the same issue make sure you just choose static IP and you need to turn off DHCP service on your router and we're going to click on done and also if you are using manual assigning IP on the red interface and also you're assigning IPs manually on the other interface then basically you know you have to configure gateway settings here so that's why I have put gateway settings because I was using manual assigning IP static IP basically and you can over here enable DHCP server you can do the basic same thing your firewall your firewall will be acting as a router here for your LAN network so whatever is connected in your LAN network it will be assigned IP address from your firewall so over here you can enter the uh, settings that you want So once you are in, just log in with your root user. And before we try to configure or try to even access firewall, we need to make sure it has access to internet. So we're going to ping google.com. Let's see if we can do that. Wonderful, now we have access to internet. This firewall is communicating with Google, so it means it has access to internet. Now we need to go to our client machine. So basically I do have a Windows 10 here which is in our LAN network. Uh, so I'm using private LAN Ethernet adapter for this Windows 10 virtual machine that I have pre-configured here. So I'll bring that up and let's see if it gets an internet access. That would be great. Usually, you know, sometimes you can run into trouble and you need to do some troubleshooting why you don't, do not have any internet access on your client PC. Basically, you need to go to firewall as long as it is able to get an IP from your firewall. So let's see if that round circle changes to a circle where it says internet access. It takes a little while, but let's try to configure an IP manually, even though we did enable DSCP service, I guess. I believe so, we did enable DSCP service. But let's see if there is a problem. We're going to disable and enable it. Oh, it has detected it so we do have internet access as it says let's do some testing and i'll do some speed test as well just to see if this adapter is giving us the speed that we need well i've got like 900 mbps download and up to six or seven hundred down uh, upload speed so i will do a speed test as well just to make sure if it is affecting my speed because this is the other thing that you want to make sure your network has the good speed to outside network. So something is definitely not right. It is limiting the speed of my internet to 100 Mbps. That's not right. So let's let's go into the firewall and we'll do the speed test later and I'll show show you guys if it is improved after a little while or if we need to make any changes. 
So to access the firewall, you need to type in IP This is the wrong port number, I believe. No, maybe we need to type HTTPS. Yes, that's the one. So, go click on details, go on the web page. There you go, it's asking for username and password. Remember, we did configure admin user and password here. So, now we have access to our IP fire. So let's explore some options here and as you can see we have two interfaces normal dashboard or main page you will see that how many interfaces you have configured they will have color on them it's pretty pretty easy to tell if you have been working with these kind of Linux firewalls so there are a few tabs here as you can so this tab is for mail service now you would be wondering does it have like a mail service for configuring emails so you can send emails. No, it's not basically for that purpose. It's for sending notifications. If there is any malicious activity in the network, you can configure a mail service there and it will keep sending an emails to your dedicated email account. Now there is a system information uh, tab here as well. You can have a look. There is few options here in status and in network tab. They are all pretty easy to configure if you know how to read English and it's basically up to if you can read what's written and whatever it says on the tab that's exactly what it does and re really easy to configure but however you can run into troubles with some of the services like URL filter, web proxy because they're a bit slow to activate. I did run into trouble like uh, if my URL filter wasn't working so Basically what I did was just went on to URL filter and just activated it. I'll show you quickly what I actually did. Just wandering around to check what options are here. And there is a VPN option. Basically it is to connect to another firewall in the network. So um, basically if you got another uh, firewall in the network, you can configure VPN access in that firewall and then communicate this firewall to that firewall. So it will pretty much act like they are both in the same network so under URL filter as you can see there are a few options already here you can click on like block ads gambling proxy block all the hacking violence and aggressive apps we're gonna just check on what we just don't usually want to access or want anybody to access on your network and we will give it a try and you will see this isn't going to work and I'm going to access um, a pawn site and it is not going to work for me and that's what I did ran into trouble and later on I did find out something about it why it wasn't working I'll show you guys what was the problem I did everything that I could do so when I clicked on save and restart here I got an error message web proxy service it must be enabled but I didn't really note down and I went on this website just to test it out so it's really really up to you are you paying attention what error message you're looking over here i have to blur it out because it is able to access this site and i don't want to put that on youtube channel so i had to block it out and i even write it down the website domain here later but later on i did notice as you can see the proxy service must be enabled to use url filter so what i did is i looked for that tab where i could see all the services that are running so let's have a look and find that tab where was it i believe it was in network tab so fiber rules and i just played around and clicked on a new rule over here you can create rule depends on your network to green interface or red interface i was just going around so i didn't really cut that path so you guys can see what i did to explore this firewall but on the status tab i was able to find service option and i went on web proxy over here you do have to enable a few features to use url filter click on enable on green uh, green and transparent on green is also must now after failing on this many times so well, i was almost giving it up on this firewall because this wasn't working for me as we wanted so i wanted to give it a go again so i right clicked on url filter kept this tab open and because i wanted to go on that tab just in case i had to come back to this tab again 
So over here you can see this time I have many options and they are really vast, uh, vast variety because I did an update on this list. As you can see over here I have ticked automatic update, uh, URL filter list update. So it, I think it has updated it in the background and I went ahead and ticked on whatever I could. But I really wanted to see if it is available to, uh, you know, not available, if it is working to block the sites that I want to block on my network, if the URL filter does work. Now, again, I did run into an issue. I will quickly show you guys that it was not really able to block any website. And I'll tell you later on why it was doing that actually because it was still updating in the background and when you enable a URL filter for some reason it does take time well it has taken time for me I don't know if you install this firewall and if it has worked for you maybe there's a new update or a patch on this firewall that has fixed the issue but currently on this date when I was configuring it I was running into this issue and I really couldn't figure out I did enable all the features I was able to update the blacklist and I was also able to enable web proxy options that I needed to so I clicked on save and restart and went back on it and clicked on save and restart on this one as well and let's go ahead and try to access that website that we wanted to actually block and I even later on I specifically mentioned that xvideos.com that I wanted to block but still it did nothing I was really surprised what's going on so this at this stage I actually gave it up I was like uh, just leave it for now and let's go ahead and explore some features so the next feature I was uh, wanting to explore was dynamic DNS and I want to show you guys what dynamic DNS is for let's go ahead and click on dynamic DNS so under services option there is option dynamic DNS here I'm going to click on that basically this is for if you have a DNS service like pointing to us to your public IP and that is basically you don't want to give your IP address publicly and you want to forward a DNS address from noip.com or DIY DNS there is a lot of free websites that will provide you a DNS address for your public IP and you can access or be a part of your firewall um, from this address and configure VPN services if you want to and that is really um, really helpful feature because some of the feature will require you to type a DNS address instead of typing IP address so that's why I guess this is there and it could be configured on red interface and there is intrusion prevention feature which is very useful and there are a few other features here you can manually create firewall rules there are log tab here to basically check the logs and let's go ahead and explore some other features what other feature it has to offer under connection under status tab you can check what are what are the connections that are being made from which IP to which IP address, what's the destination IP and what's the source IP, basically for monitoring. And we can go ahead and there is a SSH access, basically this is for accessing your firewall through SSH command line interface. If you're really good with that, you can do that instead of going through a web interface. And there is hardware vulnerability. Uh, and that is also that can be configured and you can save these settings um, like you know KVM if you know what KVM is for basically for you know using a specific hardware and passing it through virtual environment so um, if you know what it make you know if it does make sense for you it's useful for you otherwise I, I don't really know how to explain that um, you need to check GPS uh, GPU pass through through you know virtual machines or passing through a special uh, specific hardware so it can be used on a virtual machine or virtually so it is kind of a also counted as vulnerability because somebody can be using your hardware to mine let's say bitcoins on your hardware and you wouldn't have any clue so that's what it is for basically you can go ahead and check few uh, and explore a few features and I'll tell you that 
you are a fault of will work it will work after a little while when it has actually finished updating if it has started update so that's why do not worry for me url filter didn't work when i was recording it but later on when i went to my machine to just give it a go i wasn't really recording that time the url filter did work so don't worry that feature does work but it is a bit slow i i hope in future there is an update and that will show if there is any update running in the background that would be very useful for, for this uh firewall but later on i did a speed test again without changing anything as you can see i didn't cut anything on this and it did manage to get up to the speed but the google server is not able to show me the correct speed so i always intend to go speedtest.net over here you can see it has managed to reach up to the speed that I wanted and I did not really make any changes. It has done it by itself. I don't know what was going in the background. There's not much information available or you can check what's happening in the background. So I don't really use or recommend IP Fire. Maybe Smooth, Fall, uh, Smooth Wall Express. It's a better option. I would always go for that or maybe pfSense they have many options and they work instantly if you enable any kind of feature that will work straight away there is no delay but IP fire seems to be running really slow and uh, you know in regards if you configure something it doesn't really work straight away uh, that's the trouble that I have been facing with IP fire so I have given up on this firewall I don't personally use it but if you like it go ahead and like this IP fire or install i don't really uh, mind if you are very um, you know getting every benefit that you needed but that's all i could explain in this video hope you liked it and if you liked it and if you have any suggestions why would i run into this url filter uh, trouble and why it worked later on if you got any theory behind it or logic behind it please comment down below and if you are using any kind of firewall distribution then please let me know in the comment section below that could be a useful for me but at the moment i don't really know any other firewall distribution other than pfSense and smoothwall and those are those are the ones that i personally use and they are really easy to configure and there are always updates available for them well thanks for watching guys hope you like this video comment down below what do you think about ip fire and let me know um, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos and you can always request a video and on specific Linux distribution or anything that you're running into trouble or you want to learn something new please leave a comment down below I will go ahead and work on that video for you guys thank you bye now